This is Adrian Webster, the internationally renowned motivational business speaker and best-selling author. And this is Dr. Jack Lewis, TV's favourite neuroscientist. Together, we've written a book called... Sort Your Brain Out. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Helps boost performance. By helping you understand how your brain works and exactly what you can do to get more out of it. I can't be the only person who feels absolutely swamped by the amount of information out there telling me what to eat, what's good for you, what isn't good for you. What's good for your brain? Out of all the foods, out of everything out there, what are the things that really help boost performance? Number one, fish. Fatty fish is a brilliant supply of omega oils. Uh, if you don't eat fish, you can also get it in things like pumpkin seeds and, and whatnot. Um, the reason omega oils are good for the brain is because they actually make up a part of the outer membrane of each brain wire. And what they do is they make them more flexible. So the little proteins embedded in that membrane can open and close much more easily, enabling those brain wires to send electrical messages more efficiently. So omega oils are great for the brain. I eat a lot of porridge. Most mornings for breakfast, I have a big bowl of porridge. I do, however, spend a lot of time staying away in hotels. And I come downstairs and into the hotel restaurant and I'm surrounded by this gourmet buffet of all these different sort of fried cooked breakfasts, whatever, fried eggs, scrambled eggs, sausages, poached eggs, bacon, whatever. It's a bit of a treat for me to have a cooked breakfast. Mm -hmm. The alternative being perhaps go for one of the, one of the more healthy cereals out there. There's porridge quite often, but I'm bored of it. So I tend to go for a full cooked breakfast as a bit of a treat. Now I know from my health, from my body's point of view, that's not the best thing because I know it's full of saturated fat. But what difference is that making to my brain? The fact it's got saturated fats in it. Fatty foods, saturated fats, which you find in, in animal meats, are really bad for the brain for a number of reasons. Now, everything in moderation, you can have it, it sounds like you have it as a treat, infrequently, which is fine. But if you're living off of that stuff habitually, every single day, over the long term, it can really cause problems. Because saturated fats accelerate a process called atherosclerosis. That's a bit of a mouthful, but what it means is, it creates a coating on the inside of blood vessels, which narrows the blood vessel, but also uh, stiffens it. So you know when you feel your pulse and you feel it expand and then snap yes, back to yep. shunt the blood along? That process is weakened through years and years and years of eating too much fat, saturated fat, in your diet. I've noticed when I'm writing and I'm having to really, really focus and really concentrate hard on something, I get the munchies. Mm. I just find that if I snack on something, it just helps me sort of... I, my brain seems to work better, I can think more clearly. For a person watching this, listening to this, who works for a living, what can they do when it gets around to 11 o'clock in the morning or it gets around to 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, and their batteries are feeling a little bit drained uh, and they just need a little pick-me-up, they need something just to give them a little energy boost. What, what, what can they do? What's the best thing for them? Know that that's going to happen. Anticipate it in advance and make sure they have a source of slow-release carbs. So that's, you know, it could be anything to do with whole grains, fruit and vegetable, um, anything that sort of, I don't know, if you think about what would have been available to Stone Age man, what, what about our sort of chimpanzee cousins, what do they snack on? If you eat that kind of stuff, it's much more likely to be the healthy, nutritious, slow-release kind of stuff that gives you a steady supply of energy rather than the modern snack foods, which are specifically designed to be Moorish, but also, you know, what better way to sell something than if it sends your blood sugar levels up and then they come crashing down again an hour or two later and you need to do it again? I'm not the only person who does this. Everybody does it. We all overeat at times. And you go from feeling absolutely fine within a split second to feeling absolutely stuffed, completely bloated. And I always think about what my mum used to say, which was, always eat till you're almost full up. Or and as they say in Japan, harahachibu. 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 What does that mean? It means, more or less, it's translated as 
uh, eat until you're 85% full. It's a phrase that comes from Okinawa in Japan where there's the highest proportion of centarians, that is people that reach 100 years old, than anywhere else in the world. So they must know something about it. But why do you suddenly go, literally, within seconds, from feeling absolutely fine to feeling completely stuffed? Ah, well that's because there's a bit of a time lag between when the, the stomach and your gut releases the chemical messengers, the hormones, into the bloodstream, and then they take time to travel up to the brain, and once they get to the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that regulates how hungry you feel, it takes a while, once it's, it's kind of sent, once it's received the message, for it to kind of shift the gears out of the hunger state and into the feeling full state. So that, there's about a 15 to 20 minute lag between being full and your brain finding out about it. There's a lot of uh, talk about coffee being bad for you. And I do drink uh, a lot of coffee. It picks me up, it gives me a bit of a buzz. If I'm just about to go out on stage to do a, a speech, a, a cup of black coffee uh, seems to really help. It's become a bit of a, probably a bit of a comfort thing that dealing with the nerves of speaking, it's part of the routine of having a cup of coffee uh, before I go out on stage. I can see the downside to coffee from a health perspective, but what's it actually doing? What is caffeine doing to your brain? More than 50% of people around the world drink coffee on a daily basis. So you're not alone. And it can be quite confusing when one day you read in the papers coffee's really good for you and then the next day you're saying, you know, you hear that coffee's really bad for you. But the upshot is, the current consensus, is that coffee does wake you up, but only to levels that non-coffee drinkers enjoy every single day. So in other words, if you're already addicted to it, then it can help you feel alert. Because basically, without the coffee, you're, you're not as awake as you could be but if what, you're a caffeine addict. But Physically, what is caffeine in my brain doing to make me feel more awake, to make me feel more alert, okay. to help me stay focused for longer on something? What, what is, what's the mechanics of it? What's it doing? Caffeine is exactly the same shape as a neurotransmitter that your brain naturally produces called adenosine. When adenosine binds its receptor, the effect that activating that receptor has is to make whatever brain circuitry it's plugged into less active. What caffeine does is it, it fits into, it's the key that fits into that lock, but without activating that receptor. So it's like, it's like taking the handbrake off. Under normal circumstances, adenosine hits the receptor, makes that brain circuit less, uh, less active, but then if you block it so that the adenosine can't, can't activate that receptor, the caffeine effectively makes the brain more active by removing the suppression on the system. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So the takeaway from this is omega oils, really, really good for the brain. Avoid fatty foods, clogging the arteries, stopping the nutrients and all the good stuff being pumped to the brain. Try and stop eating if you can before you feel full up. Definitely. Avoid the sugar highs and lows with slow release carbs. Correct. And coffee, in moderation, is good for the brain. Bang on.